Like forgetting to write an intro so you sit there in the dark in your underwear at 10.37 at night on a Sunday to make one up. This is Plus Four Friends. So last time on Plus Four Friends, uh, we went down a, a cavern and climbed up to the mountain, but it wasn't really real. Gasp. We got separated, and Basil uh, was thrown down a shaft, ah. and and uh, Dagmar was blown hard <laughs> down us down the tunnel. And then we found ourselves on a cooking stadium, if you will, where we had to do battle in the kitchen. We lost by one point, and as a consequence, Basil's uh, body boy powers were removed, and then we were saved last minute by the the Guardians. The Avengers. The Guardians Guild leader. Yeah. Cassandra. Marlowe. Yeah. And then Moody Marlowe touched Basil, and he became a new a ranger. That takes us to now. Oh. And that's now me, Timothy Magic, your dungeon master for the evening. With me as always, of course, Matthew Magic, Tori oh. Baxter, Tom Stewart, with uh, Bishop Basil and Dagmar. Guess which one is which? Mm-hmm. If you don't know by now, you'll never complete your trading card set. Fools. Nah. My Heroes 3 have been... Um, been Occupied at the dormitories, if it will, uh, of the floating crystalline castle of the Guardians of the Realm. They've stayed now for a couple weeks after the last week's incidents. Uh, <laughs> for the listener at home, it's been several uh, days since our heroes uh, left the Calbeck Peaks, have left the uh, Chaos Dimension, and have returned to the Terra Plane, where they are now residing gaining new skills, and learning and growing with changes as they level up, if you will, to their new stations. The Guardians are assisting them in this. They've paid particular attention to Basil with his ancestral blessing bestowed upon him, which is a rare find in this day and age. They're helping him regain not so much the physical uh, stats and fighting, uh, that's not really their uh, cup of tea, uh, but they are helping him with his uh, ranger magics. We see now in the form of a montage a little bit of Dagmar and Basil in the library going over different spells that the Guardians have accumulated over years and years. We see the training, the physical, uh, and execution of the spells with with Bishop and, uh, and and Basil in the field, in the training quarters, as it were. Executing some things since the druid magics are very similar in the in, in the schools and disciplines, as it were, between ranger and druid. We see them working together, growing as pupils. We also uh, have the guardians assisting my heroes three. There is going to be some roles uh, taking place now. Our heroes not only uh, study in their downtime together uh, as partners in their dormitories. Uh, we also see them uh, training with Simon, uh, the snowy white owl. He's instructing them on the archery field today. Of course, that archery field was not there yesterday, but magics. You've come to understand that living in the dormitories of some of the first-year wizards and sorcerers uh, and other magic casters uh, for the Guardians' tutelage, uh, they are very much keen in making sure you can survive even if you have expended your arcana or divine spell slots for the day. And so Simon is your instructor. He sits perched on the uh, on the firing line. Not, of course, in the line of fire, but on the far end to instruct you and inspect your shots. <clears throat> you well, three are his uh, students for the afternoon. Ah, uh, man, it's been, uh, it's been years since I have played with one of these things. <laughs> the... Take your, take your time. Take your time. Oh, sorry, Simon. 
It's all right. <laughs> I've caught it in my talons. <laughs> I'm so awesome. Y yes. <laughs> even that's why I'm the archery instructor. <laughs> even did a backflip so cool. <laughs> oh, wow. That's Ooh. one talented owl. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, haven't now, used my crossbow in a long time? <laughs> now, now, I hope, I hope uh, Mr. Bishop, I hope you don't find this monotonous. I know many of the elven clans teach very similar starter lessons, so bear with me that... It's all right. We all could use a refresher every hundred years, right? <laughs> Have you not? Fu when is the last time you loosed an arrow? Oh, uh, I think it was in a a uh, drunken betting match. No, he means when's the last time you shot a bow? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, that was just uh, twenty years ago. <laughs> you haven't shot a bow in twenty years. Yeah, you know, uh, elf time. It's like it's like a that's like a year. Too. One one thing. It's like a blink of an eye to an ant. You know, one I mean, I haven't shot another. a bow in ten years, so mm. yeah. Don't, don't. It's been ten. Oh, it's been multiple decades. That Miss Dagmar. <laughs> Why are you surprised by that? I'm a barbarian. That's, well, that's, well, I was a barbarian. Just, Still got to get used to that. I just always assumed, like for my uh, for my students, they understood the benefit of a ranged weapon. I don't know. It's been a while for me, but I was never very good, so I just kind of carry it around for looks. Yeah, the uh, benefits of a ranged weapon weren't really taught in the Ursine Corps. It was more, uh, you know, cannon fodder type nice. tactics, you know. Just get in there and be a meat shield. Nat 20. Yay. While you guys are 20, uh, while you guys are talking, it's just <laughs> nat 20. Well, <laughs> I dead arm Bishop for being a show off. <laughs> it goes Gold through like ten shim. pumpkins. Gold Don't shimmers off the shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, as I stated, I understand you took a very similar course uh, when when Plunderbloom Hills was, of course, in its prime. If you don't mind me saying, I understand that's part of your upbringing. How did you know that? I am a resident of this terra plane. I, I, I heard the tragedy of the Plunderbloom Hills. It's so what are we going to get started on the bow bow Cle shooting thing? Cle collect your ammunition and your choice of weapons. I, of course, have heavy and light crossbows, long and short bows. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my hand at a long bow. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to keep up with my, my light crossbow. Very see good. How, see how I'm doing. There are a series of targets, all uh, of various meters. Or... <laughs> Hang on, D and D. All the various squares away. <laughs> what was that one, <laughs> that, Bishop? That. If you don't stop shooting before he stops talking, I'm gonna punch you. That was five D twenties, and they are ten, eleven, twenty, seven, and twenty. Add your range modifier. Which one? Well, I don't know. Yeah, your range attack modifier. All right. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna go back up in my room because somebody's being a real, uh, seven. No, real seven. show off here and. Uh, Getting real, getting real negative vibes from Mister. I can do everything, Mister. Uh, Plunderbloom. Please uh, retreat from the archery line. <laughs> Five arrows. <Mr>. Just... <laughs> they are do. It's good placement. <laughs> he is. He is kind of showing, and you hit the various targets of of fifty feet, hundred feet, one hundred and fifty feet away. Max range for the longbow. You know. Go ahead and strike the targets as best you can, please. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Plunderbloom, yes. you may rest for this next round. Okay. We get it. You're already good. <laughs> 20. Natural? No. no. Unnatural. You're coming, you're coming into your new skills very well, Mr. Spicebeard. You've hit the 50-foot target extremely well. Try for the 100-foot. Uh, that one's not as good. Uh, AA 15. Are we just adding our proficiency? A little bonus? bit, a bit, a little bit lower than the than the innermost ring, but still very good. Okay, you guys can keep going. I'm just really warming up a roll here. I I see that. Just jingling. Shoot that Shoot it any time, <laughs> Dagmar. Yeah, for the listener at home, Dagmar's just like squaring up with a yeah! fifty foot target. Um, <laughs> not well. <laughs> Apparently, a three minute warm up only gets you. A nine. A nine? nine you do total. hit the target, but it is the outermost ring. Uh, Yay! 16 for the third shot. Third shot. Yeah. Okay, again, a uh, very similar placement to your second shot. Uh, I'm guessing you're going for the 150. Uh, sure. Uh, I meant to do that. 
All right. Very similar placement. All right. I think you're adapting well in these last couple of weeks, Mr. Spicebeard, to your new... Um... Well, it's uh, kind of like riding a bike, you know, but mm-hmm. you shoot people with really sharp things. Right. So not at all, but you get my meaning. What is a bike? Yeah, <laughs> it's got two wheels and a frame. A wagon? Sure. Like riding a wagon? Yeah. Fl- well, uh, that's right. what you like to ride. Okay. A natural 20. I'm a natural learner. She, you hit square uh, bullseye perfectly um, for the 50 foot target. We're all friends here. Why is everybody most, trying to upstage me? Most excellent. This is training to benefit all of you. It's not a competition, bet- I mean, a friendly competition for sure, uh, between friends. Which is what we're all about. Yeah, you, you know, know I'm new time. to this whole thing, and everybody's like, oh, look, look at Basil, what a, what a fuck nugget. <laughs> Piece of shit, can't even shoot a bow, hasn't done it in ten years. Uh, we got over. magic! Flip over, and Bishop's, like, sleeping in a tree, and he just, like, loosely, like, beneath him from the tree <laughs> limb, lets one loose, Roll. and it splits here. Roll. <laughs> Roll for that. Roll for that, you, yeah. you ass. Yes, I want to see that. Hope you get a fucking nat one. Trying falls, to show falls off. Falls out of the tree, gets an arrow to the butt. Uh, seventeen plus seven. <laughs> it doesn't mm-hmm. split the arrow, but mm-hmm. very. It's very. Much. Robin Hood. Well, maybe we should just change roles then, <laughs> since you're so fucking good at shooting arrows. <laughs> this is a great start, huh? Yeah. I I haven't even talked to you like that. Why are you being such a a negative Nancy? You, you know what? No, no. How about we, we just trade roles? You be the ranger and I'll be the druid. I'll cast magic. Uh, oh, look at me. Oh, uh, look. Uh, I roll a 29 of magic. Uh, I'm a bear. Uh, fuck you. I'm done. <laughs> well, well, that lesson went well. Um, good, good work, everyone. Uh, it seems like Basil is still working out his aggression issues. He can't go into a rage, so he goes into a rage. <laughs> You know, you don't receive any combat bonuses from that, right, Puzzle? Go into my room. Very well. Bye! Done! <laughs> done. Sorry, I came back just to tell you that I was done. You're right. Going back up to my room to read my spell books. Let's mm-hmm. call him Mad Eye, because mm-hmm. this one's moody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm not helping you guys. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> day two. <laughs> the next day. The Lady Zelda appears before you in your training courts. Uh, in the still kind of cafe. I'm still up in my room. I don't, no, I don't want to. I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I don't even want to. I don't want to anymore. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I hey, have uh, we Ms. can't Stag- hear you from have, up in your room. Mr. So <laughs> if you could just... Miss Dagmar? I don't even want to anymore. Mr. Basil? Uh, Mr. Basil, uh, is that I cast, Mr. I cast mute on him. <laughs> it's not a real spell. Mr. Bishop? Fine. Yes. I cast command, see, and I thank demand you, for both you hold attending. your tongue. Uh, this afternoon, where is your third compatriot? Pouting. Pouting. I see. Being sulky. I see. One wanna... I, think, I think he's hitting dwarf puberty. <laughs> he's gotten a bunch of pimples and he's all <laughs> angry and broody. One moment, she evaporates into a white mist. As God, I love it before. when she does that. <laughs> a white mist appears in the dormitory of Basil Spicebeard. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not exactly what's just Josh s- and you, Zelda. Uh, what's up? Mm. Heard the term "red rocket" before, but that's something oh, else. God. I like your red rocket ship model oh, in the corner. Man, there. my joke was cool, but yours is just gross. <laughs> I was gonna make a peanut butter joke, so. <sighs> well, uh, as you are aware, uh, the clock has struck nine, mm-hmm. and it is time for the new uh, lessons. You three being of my advanced tutelage, I would like you all to attend for this Fine. combat training. But tell Bishop to stop being a real show offy asshole. You you hear Bishop from the courtyard. No. <laughs> Mr. Spicebeard, while we have a moment alone and no one else can interrupt Just this scene. Eye. <laughs> and no one else can chime in through like the windows or from the courtyard. <laughs> Dagmar Land. floats up. This is the worst. I haven't felt this much oh, oh. invasion of privacy <laughs> since my old days in the army. I understand this might be a hard transition for you. It was hard for me to adjust to this plane of terror from my dimension. I had to get used to the physics and the weight and the gravity and everything in this world that I now primarily reside in. It's still 
kind of wearing like a left glove on your right hand. I understand you might be dealing with some stress. The new uh, class skills, if you will, the new um, fighting tactics. Trust us, we are only doing this to ensure that you three will survive once you leave these dormitories. Yeah, I, I'm just I'm just feeling a lot of pressure because you know I, you know, trying to do the whole magic thing. Not not super great at it, and. I just met my dead dad, and, you know, I'm still trying to process that, and then, you know, my friends aren't being real supportive, they're just kind of, you know, making fun of the new change, like, oh, look how bad he is, I've been shooting an arrow, oh, look, I, I can shoot without looking, and, you know, it just makes me, you know, I'm just, I'm real sad about it. I understand. If you need to talk about it more after the lessons uh, of this afternoon, let me know. You may see me in my chambers. Oh, oh, okay, that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tagmar, get away from my window, please. <laughs> oh, sorry, it wasn't all of us? <laughs> yeah. Why are you not in the courtyard? <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe. Anyway, let's let's go down for that arrow shooting, I guess, or whatever we were going to do. Oh, no, I don't do archery. Oh, magic? This is, something, this is actually something a little bit more akin uh, to uh, what you uh, were in the vein of before. We are going to be doing combat maneuvers. Oh God! And with that, can't she... wait to fail this one. Let's go. She poofs down again, and then five minutes later, she's walking down the stairs. <laughs> you couldn't take me with you or anything. No. It's all about the calisthenics, Mister Spicebeard. Uh, fine. Yeah. Whatever. Get the all blood right, Let's right. get this over with. Right. All right. Join me now in this uh, muttle arena. Uh, and she enters you into a um, about sixty by sixty uh, square space, where she uh, where uh, adorned on the walls are some blunt uh, instruments of battle play, uh, blunt swords, wooden swords, uh, maces uh, without, of course, the spikes, uh, sh- sword shields, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. a variety that mm-hmm. you can choose from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You may gain any weapon you like, and I will. Now assess you in uh, your uh, ability to approach, attack, and swing, and execute different maneuvers. I pick the short sword, because I carry one on me. All right, you pick pick up a wooden short sword. Hmm, hmm, it's a tough one. Um, kind of used to the big and beefy, but maybe I should go with more finesse. Uh, I'll go the Dagmar route. I'm going to pick up dual dual short swords. Very good. Uh, I'm going to go with a staff. All right. Well, what are you going to do to 300 damage with it, Mr. God? Yes. I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. All I do is adorn you with my apathetic nature, and you take it and twist it into a, a self aggrandizing attacks. All right, let's just keep doing this before. <laughs> right. No, no. Now no. you all have your weapon Come at me, bro. What's going we on? Will, we will get to that drill in a moment. First, stab him. Let's, take, stab let's take him. it through stab our... Him. I'm going to stab him. <laughs> I'm going to let him sorry, stab me. I'm going to let him nothing, stab Nothing, nothing. Yeah, sorry. Go on with the lesson. <laughs> all right. First, let's begin through some basic maneuvers. And she takes you through the drills. Um, you know, thrust, parries, slices, jabs. Uh, blocks, everything like that, um, with your different uh, proficiencies. Mm-hmm. Be a one-handed, two-handed, uh, staff, short sword, what have you. Very good. All right. That lesson is complete. Let's uh, try a little bit more advanced technique. I want you to all take your time now. Uh, one by one, charge me. Oh, God. Okay. I'm I'm gonna let you two take the lead on this one. I'm not really uh so just like swing at you Charge me. Charge you, okay. Intend to strike me down with a charge. Oh man. Okay. Uh Yeah <laughs> <laughs> She senses your app she senses your uh, hesitation. She rears back. Actually she gets into what would be normally uh, seen as a, a wolf's fighting stance. Hair bristles on the back of her neck. Bang showing. You actually see a violent side of Zelda you have not seen oh, before. Shit. Oh, God. <laughs> this is not a game! Charge me! Okay. 
Uh, Basil, you used to you used to be a a barbarian. This this should be right up your alley. I well, I didn't try and stab dogs. <laughs> Just pretend she's that pig from the woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy All right, am I just swinging a melee on her? Or? Yes. Okay. Are you doing a charge um, attack? And so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. Oh no, you're not. Like Basil does uh, No, it's I whiffed on that. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm gonna go for. Well, I don't even know how to do a charge attack. I believe it's uh, yeah. You approach the target from a few feet away. Um, you add like plus two to your attack, but minus two to your AC, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Well, it still probably won't hit. Uh, 11, and then I'm going to do an offhand swing. Okay. God damn. Four, 15. Okay. That first one definitely does whiff um, over over Zelda's head, because, again, she's in that attack uh, position. You strike a little bit lower than she's normally, you know, sitting and looking at you. Uh, that second offhand swing does come up uh, ready to strike a true. Uh, she dissipates and appears behind you. Make a rex, uh, reflex save. Oh, good. Look at me. I'm a cute puppy dog. They she's going to do the, the Japanese thing where That's you do the, the butt. That's a 21. Ooh, it ties. <laughs> Give me another uh, just face roll. 10. Okay, you actually survive a trip attempt uh, from the lazy She ch- uh, kind of like uh, wiggle, uh, she kind of uh, evaporates and then reappears. Uh, right behind your kneecaps and she clearly was like kicking off them trying to trip you but you hold your ground and turn around digging the practice blades into the ground ready square up against her facing eye to eye good thanks <laughs> wow yeah if anybody else wants to take a, a swing uh, i think you'll be uh, uh surprised mm-hmm. swear it's not just me go for it dag okay okay here, here I go. Sw- da- here. Miss Dagmar, take to the air. Got it. Fleep. It's a trick. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> Do I still use my short oh, sword? Oh, she's yes. going to fuck her shit up. <laughs> I've seen this in the backyard once. Dive the bomb dog me. always wins. <laughs> Dive bomb me. Seven. Plus? No. Nope. <laughs> nope, seven. <laughs> We're all doing bad today. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely... Uh, Hops one square over, and you plant the sword deep into the ground. <laughs> it's, it's now, uh, uh, it, it is now uh, buried deep in there. Uh, what's just your base AC? Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. She plops her hands on your shoulder. <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. <sighs> I would have snapped your wings. <laughs> okay. We'll try it again. She's real scary today. <laughs> we'll try it again in a second. Mr. Mr. Bishop. Oh, don't worry. He'll just roll a natural 20. Uh, 14 total. 14 total? Yeah. Okay. Again, uh, she ducks and weaves. Uh, doesn't uh, disappear from this dimension uh, for that. Uh, she ducks and weaves uh, in between your um, a swinging of the stick. <laughs> Grabs it in her mouth. Yanks it. <laughs> well, actually, strength, strength contest. You'll win. I have a negative one. So 11. Okay. She takes your hands with it. <laughs> My hands! They pop off like... I use them for magic casting! <laughs> they pop off like little Lego hands. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I imagine. No, about Ty. You get, uh, she was about to rip the uh, quarterstaff away from your hand, but you hold it steady. Good. Bad you not, girl. You have not, not been disarmed. Please don't belittle me. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that she could probably um, kill us all. So I wonder why she sends us kill on us these all. missions. Kill, kill us all. <laughs> you, should, you should meet my cousin Cujo. <laughs> <laughs> He's cool, though. All right. We will continue these uh, practice maneuvers, um, and I will see you all next week. For the m- rest of the time, practice on honing your precision strikes and your different maneuvers. Day three. You are not greeted by Simon or Zelda at this time, but you are met with the chair of the Guardians of the Room. Cassandra greets you all. Welcome, my Guardians. Today we will be doing a different form of lesson. 
not so much to deal with your physical uh, aptitudes or abilities, but rather your mental fortitudes. With your permissions, I'm going to cast you into different planar systems. We will do some temporary teleportations. You will remain there for just a handful of seconds and reappear here in this courtyard. <laughs> I, have, I have every faith that I have calculated my trajectories correctly and you will not be harmed. But then, you know, we got to roll the dice. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> who would like to, who would like to uh, attempt the teleportation spell first? Bishop, this seems like something's right up your alley. Yeah, magic man, go for it. Bishop slowly steps up. All right. Very good, okay. Mr. Plunderbloom. I'm going to attempt to uh, send you to the planar system of the Red Sands. You will feel great heat and exposure. You will not remain long. My spell duration only lasts a handful of moments. You should not take damage. I just want to get you all accommodated to the planar jumps, which clearly we had to encounter without warning before. This is a much more advanced technique. It's usually reserved for my very graduated wizards and sorcerers. This is not normally something I would do for somewhat of the druid class. Are you ready? Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Yeah. A little high for this, but yeah. <laughs> she levers her staff in front of her. Shimmering red and copper light comes out, enveloping Bishop completely. He immediately winks out of his existence. Wink. Well, Bishop comes. Ding. Where are we going to find our third person now? <laughs> Bishop looks around Basil after like the, after the like copper dirty. light has upsided, and he is on a. Uh, tall, jagged, red mountainside on a plane he's never seen before. He sees great worms swarming to and fro below him, harvesting their, their feed uh, for the day, ah. taking up this plane. He sees civilizations way off in the distance. He takes it in. The air is just the smell of stale blood and just harsh climate around him. The sandstorms whip up, even all the way up at this top spiry peak, hitting his face, cracking cracking into his eyes. He must shield himself for a moment, and as he brings his hand back down, he's back with his companions at the training grounds. Damn. I mean, yeah, he's back. What'd you see? Oh, God. I think I'm gonna throw up. There were no plants anywhere. <laughs> Worms, feeding, sand, like blood. Ma like maggots? Ugh. Blech. <laughs> yes. I want to say, because it was like such a like intense and like the trip back and forth mm -hmm. was so rapid that mm -hmm. I mean, felt like a little nauseous probably. Right. Make a constitution saving throw to not throw up. <laughs> Gird your loins. Well, that's a two. You he throw up. <laughs> Plus one, so that's a three. Oh, you really no. throw up. You got some chunks. <laughs> oh, no. Nobody likes to see that. Oh. That, that is actually quite common um, from jumping from plane to plane. I must admit I've had to throw away some investments after trips back and forth uh, from time to time. You did very well. Thanks. <laughs> Are you Boy, all right? I, yeah, I think I'll be all right. Mm. Geez, I really hope this doesn't happen to any other Moe companions. <laughs> I would hate for anything to happen Dagmar to Dagmar's shaking at this point, and you can just clearly see the fear on her face. I'm already throwing up. All right. Oh, God. If you're not ready for this today... We no, can... no, we, I, we can do it. It's fine. Okay. Who would I, like to... I'll now? do it. I'll go. Okay. I want to get it over with. Very good. Miss Dagmar? Yes. I'm going to send you to the plane where you draw the very source of your magics. From beyond. The death plane? The, pla the plane where you. You're going to send me beyond the veil? Yes, I will, I will take you beyond she the veil. She shakes harder. <laughs> Only for a moment, as much time as has elapsed with Mr. Plunderbloom here. He was back and, and here and just 
Honestly, just a little bit tummy sick. Hey, 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 Bishop, how long did it feel like when you were over there? 10,000 years. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't know how long I was gone, but it didn't feel like a long time, but it definitely felt longer than just a moment. Okay, I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to go. Very good. She lifts her staff in front of Dagmar. Much more dark, violet, shimmering smoke comes out, actually enveloping Dagmar. Very different from the casting that uh, enveloped your companion beforehand. And within the blink of an eye, top of your feather, uh, you reside in a field of just carcass, bone, sinew, marrow, all dripping out. Delicious. All about you. And sitting before you on a, uh, on a th- throne of those skeletal remains, a dark-haired woman casts her eyes at you. The queen. My child, I did not expect you so... I will see you later. Oh, God. <laughs> Dagmar, steady your... It's steady our movie your... night tonight, and <laughs> I have popcorn. Steady yourself for the journey home, my child. Dagmar falls to her knees. Mm-hmm. And with that, she sinks through the uh, rib cages and, and hands and legs and femurs and all the remains uh, falling through. It's like you're falling out of the sky, and you, like, your instinct is to flap your wings open. Yeah. And you do that as you're standing there solidly on the ground. Is there a bunch of rib cages and skulls nope. next to her feet? Just her, just her in the in the plaza again. And she, yeah, she falls onto all fours. Mm-hmm. She has no strength in her legs. Mm. She can't stand. She does vomit. D- Dang, oh. what did oh. what did you see? I, you look like you're a little roughed up. I, I, I saw her. Saw so who? The queen. Oh. You mean the queen of death? And she's just shaking. And just Ralph's all over the ground. Oh, well, I mean, I would do the same if I... I mean, not because of her appearance, but, you know, meeting death. And... Tears flow down her face. Mm-hmm. She's peered past, past the veil before, but never like this. Oh, so it's a happy had... vomit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kind of like an overwhelm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Imagine you, seeing you, your god you, You've got You've gone from time. having just a sliver of that power to now being in its very audience. Yeah. It's like enveloping the whole room. You know? Being able to peer beyond mm-hmm. the veil to actually knowing what lies beyond. Mm-hmm. You've had a peek behind the curtain and now yeah. you have like an entire room full of it. And oh, like, shit. And mm-hmm. the Raven Queen like fucking looked at me and said words. Mm-hmm. Oh, you communed with her? Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't, I did not expect to commune with her this phase of the moon and the, uh, uh, and the harvesting season passing. I've never talked to her before. I've never even seen her. Did she only say in pictures? Did she say anything to your quest? She said we'd meet soon. Very interesting, Miss Dagmar. <clears throat> Sounds bad, but maybe it's good. <laughs> I invite you to speak with uh, some of our clerics. I'm a, I should. I should go do that. Yes. Yeah, so she we'll like tries to like later. stand on her feet and like is all take shaky. Your t- take your time after this. After Mr. Spicebeard, we will take a break. I was going to say, Bishop tries to help you, but is also kind of like, still kind of like, uh, so it's like the blind leading the blind. We'll take some time. We'll recuperate. Puke just everywhere in this really (laughs) fancy hall. Oh, boy. Don't worry. Don't worry. We have a spill for that. I just wanted to take a lot of prestidigitation for that. (laughs) Just didn't want to use it just in case Mr. Spicebeard had a similar experience. Yeah. Speaking of which, Mr. Spicebeard, are you ready? Yep. Can't wait to throw up. Very good. You'll you'll do fine. Hi-ho, silver away. Now, of course, I'm going to take you uh, to a dimension... That will test your very mental uh, capacity. Very similar it's, to what... It's pretty small. Very similar to what you were exposed to uh, on the Calabac Peaks. However, I want to, I want to ensure that you, you will be able to survive these hearty tests of strength and the deeds before you. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be, I guess. Very good. She lifts... Her, sp- her her staff over once again, emanating this time, um, is blue arcing light, uh, and white wisps of smoke, consuming you, shooting you, vertically, into a mountainside again very similar to the Calabac Peaks. It's very cold, the wind whipping your face, tugging at your beard, 
Zora, uh, 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 Doris, um, digging into your beard uh, deeper uh, for comfort. <laughs> it's okay, Doris. It's just an extra planar space. Around you exists living pieces of the mountain. Mountain golems, mountain giants, icicle like creatures and titans roam about, oh, stomping every every footfall seems to cause an avalanche. Every shockwave sounds of a thunderbolt. And they loom around in the civilization. They take take it in. One seems to spot you for a moment, looking to reach at you, pluck you as oh, if you're a oh, small please, apple please, please, from oh, the cart. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. And, and at, at that time where you feel like the, fi- uh, the cold, icy fingers are about to grace your skin, you pop back into the square. Oh, Make a constitution oh, save. Lord. Right <laughs> oh, Lord. Doris, make a t- constitution saving throw, too. <laughs> Natural 20. You are fine. <laughs> uh, that wasn't even a big deal. <laughs> Doris got a Natural 9 plus uh, 3. She got a 12. She's okay. <laughs> put she a little, skipped I, breakfast. I put a finger on her on her lips like, oh, sorry, Doris. Don't worry about it. Don't mess in my beard, please. <laughs> Takes a lot, a lot of shampoo to wash this. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> How are the planes of the ice giants and golems? Well, I'd be lying if I uh, said it wasn't scary. Um, You know, 100-foot-tall ice giants and causing avalanches. (laughs) I thought Odin promised to get rid of all those. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know who this Odin you speak of is. but Ah, he's a guy from a bar way back. Don't worry about it. I won't. (laughs) (laughs) No, I got the reference. It was pretty good. Dagmar and uh, Bishop are are laying on a fainting couch, just like, (laughs) I imagine. hey, he's bad. Yeah, I imagine we're like arm in arm, like, yay. A little slobbery. (laughs) Yeah, a little like, a little little loopy, weak. Hey, our body boy is bad. Hey, guys, how you feeling, buddy? Hey, look at you, not throwing up. I'm going to back a foot away. Don't throw up. (laughs) I'm good, I'm good. I got it all out. All right. Totally. <laughs> still, still gonna stay back here. I'm very proud of all of you. Uh, I understand returning from planar jumps is definitely jarring. Uh, it is my intention to not send you on too many of these. Now However, you do it. Show us that you can. Do- <laughs> you want me to demonstrate? Yes. Very well. You just want to see her throw up, you pervert. <laughs> That's my thing. She lifts her arms, her robes, and her shimmering staff once more. She disappears into a uh, shimmering light of yellow. Quick, um, still everything <laughs> that isn't bolted down. Mm-hmm. And, she returns, and she returns right in front of you, Bishop. He throws up again. <laughs> <laughs> she catches it in a golden goblet. Ew. In front of her. Ew. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, yes. what, so what was the point of all that? Are we going to go on some crazy multidimensional adventures or... It's it's clear that at one point or another you will be faced with extra planar threats in this in this world and elsewhere. I want you to be prepared in case I need to send you there, in case you need to pursue a target there, or in case you wind up there from some nefarious villain's actions. You are now part of a bigger picture. You are now now part of a larger organization, and your events have not gone unnoticed. To my rings of allies, and enemies. Word is getting around about you three. And I want to be prepared in the event that you will wind up in one of these terrible elemental conditions. These extraordinary uh, creatures from beyond our planar system to encounter you again. I want to never let have your guard down. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, God. Yay. Again. As long as you are in my service, you will have my protections as my guardians. However, I am not capable of being everywhere at once, and I will require you to call on your own strengths, your own magics, and physical aptitudes in the future, in the event that I cannot sweep in and save the day at the last moment. It's up to you three to have each other's backs, and it's up to you three to preserve the sanity and sanctuary of Terra Plane. No pressure. <laughs> oh, it feels that way. Uh, yeah. This is a tall order. Uh, yeah. Well, 
I'm just gonna go take some Pepto and uh, think about this for a bit, if uh, it's all the same to you. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. enough for this afternoon, yes. I'm wondering if Dagmar can, um, I don't know, since this is such a big fancy place, if she can switch out her short sword for a common staff. Yeah. Yeah, because there's the staff of flowers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was wondering if I could switch out my short sword for a staff. It just seems more fitting for her. You mean as an arcane focus? Um, it, well, the staff of flowers just, you can just pop it places and it makes flowers. Okay. Well, I mean, but staff isn't, if you're, gonna, if you're trying to do a staff for like attacking. No, it wouldn't be for attacking. Well, these ones aren't. There's a bunch of different ones, oh, but okay. I just wanted to. Ca- she's not going to use the short sword. Okay. Ever. okay. Like I, yeah. I'll she take. Would, she obviously saw how good she did. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> then I only have to buy one. <laughs> yeah, it's not a. It's not a bad little guy. I have um. Two pound short sword. It's only ten gold pieces, but it's yours. It'll save me ten gold. <laughs> Yay! Hooray. Happy Happy Ranger Day to me. I treat you. Here, I just happen to have a staff of flowers. <laughs> Got this gay little staff of flowers. Hey, there you go, kid. Go crazy with it. All right. So the next day passes, and we find our heroes eating second breakfast with the Guardians of the Rope. That's a thing. Tangers and mash, my favorite. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got a scotch egg. Mm. <laughs> mm. I got scotch. <laughs> I thought you had whiskey. I got so, bo- A man can have both. <laughs> a man can have both. <laughs> Simon's looking a little just sideways. You eating an egg. There's, there's nothing. It's not like an Aarakocra egg. It's a chicken egg. Birds eat other birds. It's birdies literally all like time. eating jizz. <laughs> it's like eating a monkey. It's fine. It's like you eat guys. Well, I mean, eating it's, a monkey. Unfertil- that, that, it's unfertilized, that, that, right? So it's just. It's not like eating a baby. Yeah, so there's like Simon, no, no being adjusts, in there. And Simon, Simon adjusts himself a little bit on his perch and like looks over like, Dagmar, I understand Aarakocos might have different cultures and, and diet practices, but you ate a human last week and this week. I eat you- many things. Okay. This is what I do. You're okay with that? I eat and like I know ethically, things. Like ethically, you're okay with that? Eating a chicken egg? Yes. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Humans, I like... humans eat monkeys. It's fine. And yeah. there are snakes that literally just eat other eggs. It's fine. Uh, why are we having this argument at breakfast? <laughs> That's not an argument. I'm just curious. But hey, like, let, okay let, the, let the birds have their bird talk. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, cluck, yeah. cluck, cluck. Let, us, yeah. let the hens cluck. I, I, hate, I hate to say <laughs> if I'm judging. It just seems... It, You've done have some you weird eaten s- one of these? It's delicious. You no. should just try it. No, I just have dead mice. <laughs> then I throw up their bones. <laughs> Here's one now. <laughs> Sorry. Whoopsie. Basil Sorry, is just exchanging gla- glances with Bishop like, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. Bishop's Why just are like, they talking so long about eggs? Uh, I'll eat that too. It's filled with bones. <laughs> I was just thinking the other day and then all of a sudden a great horned owl Flock Kill it! Fly, flies in. <laughs> <laughs> My bow train! <laughs> but, as good. we know, Basil rolls a five and misses. <laughs> hey, shut up. I'm going to actually roll to kill this owl now. <laughs> no, Do it. Roll to kill the owl. Twelve plus eight. You don't 20. have a bow and arrow. You're on breakfast. Damn it. <laughs> you don't have it. <laughs> Just so you know, I would have had Can you throw the plate or something at it? Yeah! <laughs> Okay, yeah. do you actually want to hit this owl coming in? <laughs> no. Like, character-wise. Like, no, <laughs> do no, it. Okay. Do it. Don't be a... a I, just wanted to, I just wanted to prove Tori wrong. Mm-hmm. A great Tori or Dagma? Owl. Both. A great horned owl uh, flies into the second breakfast nook. You are all... <laughs> yeah, it's a nook. Uh, are all attending him. He takes perch not, uh, across the table from Simon. Simon... Do they know of, each other? Kind of fluffs up a little bit. He has his plumage come out a, a little bit. <laughs> it's all right, Simon. You got the abs. This guy's got nothing on you. Is oh, Simon a barred owl? My dear. No, Simon's a snowy white owl. Snowy owl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the great horn owl. If if a owl could smile, it smiles. That's uh, Simon. My dear friend and associate, Simon. So good to see you. It's been like too guy. long. Simon, do you want me to kill this guy? I want Sebastian. And I'm just nodding no, at you like, no, yeah, no, kill him. No, 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 Use the plate. No, 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 Use the plate. No, 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 no. You say the word. No, no, no. I brought my bow and arrow to it's breakfast. Fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's, 
Is my equivalent to the North chapter. I'm the South chapter. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Eat what do you want? You'd have been one bite. What? We, it's fine. Weirdo. It's fine. <laughs> what do you want, Sebastian? I come with good tidings. I've heard you have your new initiates. Are these them? Your heroes three? We've been hearing so much about you up north. Hi, Sebastian. <laughs> yes. Why do you talk like that? Talk like what? 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 Nothing. Huh? You're, you're saying the things out loud again, Dagmar. <laughs> Shit. I'm just eating oh, my stew. Mm. Looks like a t- and looks my like egg. egg. <laughs> and my oh, egg. Mm, you're okay with eating eggs? That was They're unfertilized, eggs Sebastian. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm just curious. <laughs> Anyways, I come with great tidings from the Menders. Okay, cool. Uh, Simon, not told you. Simon. Okay, the Menders are Terra's version of the Guardians. They're a little bit more Earth-based, which is probably why they noticed your practicing. You're much more natural casters rather than the schools of magic and sorcery. <laughs> I'm so, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> and divi- and divinity. Dagmar pouts. Divinity lies in all the veins of all the magics. Uh, Dagmar, don't don't take it personal. It's just, it's just they probably noticed the new emergence of the druidic magic we've been training you guys in, <laughs> and the ranger magic we've been training you guys in. <laughs> all right. That's right. That's right, Simon. And frankly, we're offended you would not call us in for conference. <laughs> we are now proposing a little initiation challenge. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> all fair, all, you know, all friendly, non-lethal, of course. You know, our our lovely little scrimmages during on the on the kickball field and things like that. Non-lethal, you say. That's... Basil sharpens an arrow. <laughs> Absolutely non lethal. My initiates with the Menders versus your initiates with the Guardians. What do you say? I'll have to take it up with Cassandra. Don't worry, we've already sent her a letter. And she's already approved. She is willing to test your metal. Oh, it's good. Only, it's only up to the, our challengers now. And from my understanding, they're quite good at completing challenges, at least for the most part. Was that was that supposed to be a dig at someone or no? I've just been hearing around that you know you interested in taking up uh, uh, causes and meeting any threat. All right, guys, he, they're talking major shit. Do we want to like? I know he said not lethal, but let's fucking kill these guys. Bishop hands uh, Basil a plate. He goes throw it. Guys, I just learned. Plate. Oh, you used that twenty from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you throw a plate? No. no. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. Guys, I feel yeah. like he's talking shit. We'll take, we will take you on in, in your home turf, the training grounds of the Lady Zelda. 60 by 60 of, of combat field and three on three. Hot. Shirts for skins? No, I'm kidding. No, of course. Uh, Full um, armor available. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Poor Dagmar was like, why'd we have to be skins? She pulled out her feathers. <laughs> ah, ah, Dagmar. Little naked body. Oh. That's a little joke I tell. You look like Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's not funny. You've never had a sense of humor, Simon. Um, you old dove. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. I mean, since they're talking mad shit, I feel like we should accept this. We can take you on any time. Yeah, what anywhere. he said. He's our team leader. Suck an egg. Yeah. Oh. Mm. I always love that adventurous spirit from Wood Elves. This is always the greatest. That's why I like hanging out in your in your rolling hills and woodlands. Bishop sh- picks up like a handful of like tree nuts unshelled and just shoves them violently in his mouth and he just very awkwardly tries to break them all with his <laughs> head in the most threatening, awkward way possible. Dagmar, you, you met Bishop before me. Is that... Is that his normal way of trying to do a threat? Because yeah, it just, just looks very painful mm, for him. This is just him just showing off. You yeah. see a weird, like, tear start to roll down. A little bit of Subtle. blood from the <laughs> shell. <laughs> mm. All right. 
Well, so I guess that's a yes from it won team a bar leader. Bet once though. Fantastic. We'll convene in twenty four hours time. Sorry to intrude on second breakfast. We'll see you all on the proving grounds. Yeah, later, douche. <laughs> Bishop, I told you, that doesn't give the impression you think it does. <laughs> Brewer. <laughs> he just wide eye. I feel. I feel like I, you. I like, just imagine you push it all out of your mouth like. <laughs> in one big like mass it, in, in the napkin buddy in the napkin don't worry I'll take care of this shells and blood <laughs> Simon's plumage starts to settle down again as Sebastian takes off it's, that man bird, that bird. <laughs> sorry I know common colloquialisms I know that Indeed. bird that ah. bird man I appreciate Turning you all off. looking to stick up for the Guardian Initiates. Uh, m- much o- more often, we send out our, if you will, trainees uh, for these kind of things. They're not exactly as hardened as, as you expect. Hopefully, their champions of this year are just their regular green marines, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, get yeah. it green, the meadow green. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, good one. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, met, yeah, this is my natural laugh. Uh, yeah. uh, they most they mostly focus on druid and and ranger trainings, though they do have a few clerics uh, from time to time. I doubt we'll encounter anything too complicated that you got, you all can't take down with your spell casting or your physical training that we've uh, perfected over the last uh, series of weeks. Blight, blight, blight. We blight, absolutely. Blight, blight. I have every confidence in you uh, well, to show up the menders this year. It's been three years since we've had a victory, and I know you will have met the match. Oh boy, three years, huh? Ooh. We pressure's on. Yes, it's. I say we start a montage, and then a bard walks in and starts going, "You're the best, But like with a harp, so it's like, "Bing, bing, bing, yeah." Terrence, Terrence, that's great. That, that's great, Terrence. The Terrence I love Terrence. this jam. Nothing's yeah, ever no, going to take you down. No, that's great, yeah. Terrence. Yeah. All right, yeah, so what do you do for the preparer in the 24 hours? You are, are about to face some nature-based... Yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what are you going to do <laughs> um, to prepare yes. for the nature-based um, uh, spellcasters and, and fighters? Pazzle and lifts fight. weights. Um, Whoa, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> with his shirt off. Sure, And, right. and Doris is, like, punching your chest... While you push <laughs> the barbell. <laughs> and then Dagmar, she's like trying to climb some stairs and she hops and she's exhausted, but she, she keeps going. Eight, my new record. <laughs> and then she throws up her wings Eight. like Rocky and she's like, eh. that was uh... And then she reviews all her spells to make sure there's nothing that she can use against natural base. And you just see uh, Bishop at candlelight, like reviewing like spell books and he just the rose pages across the desk and he's like no and he's like rubbing his hands through his hair like it's all wrong and he puts his you know head down and uh, out of the the corner of the camera you see a, a shimmering white paw rub his shoulder like it's okay buddy Man, I don't so know why I spent 24 hours lifting weights. <laughs> that did not give me any benefit whatsoever. I just then, feel so. And then sore. one of the pieces of paper that was that was falling from from Basil's, that was, excuse me, Bishop's um, desk. desk. It's it, it in lands, Zelda's says, mouth. It's in Zelda's mouth. It says Flame Blade. And then mm-hmm. use Flame Blade. B- Bishop slowly <laughs> nods his head. He's like, Yeah, yeah, that is the answer. Mm. And looks in Zelda's eyes, and Zelda just looks blankly back at him, like. Yeah, that's, that's the answer. What a wonderful 24 hours that was. <laughs> You're the best. All right. And then, all right, Dor- 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 all right Terrence, get out of here. I'm sick of that song. You've been playing it on loop for 24 hours. But Doris is like rocking out. His it. voice I is have... all hoarse. And... <laughs> take, a, take a breather. Do- but Doris is also singing to it, too. She's like, me, 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 me. She's like really rocking out. And she's also still just punching you. Can she like, be all beefy by then after 24 <laughs> hours of punching a chest? I don't even know how she... that's physically possible. <laughs> she has pecs. I'm impressed. <laughs> anyway, are we fighting? No, then, yeah, she's all like buff and she's like, me. <laughs> yeah. 
I was going to say, exactly. like, you guys sleep at all during that? <laughs> yes. Now you have a disadvantage on all your rules. No. Oh, <laughs> one, one level of exhaustion. No. Oh. Shouldn't have lifted all those weights. I definitely slept. I was in my spell books and I was just... <laughs> I didn't mean to, you like... You know how it goes. I didn't mean to, like, take over everybody's montage, but... There nope, it was. That, that's it. Montage done. Montage done. We can't, we can't afford another montage. It's not in the budget. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, it's, yeah. the next it's, it's the next, the next morning. morning. It's the next morning. It is the next morning. Cock a doodle do. I need some Cassandra, eggs. Cassandra greets you after first breakfast. No time for second breakfast uh, uh, today, my heroes three. Damn. Can I take some hard boiled eggs in my pocket? That's kind of weird, but yes. With you, so what you guys think of my eggs are weird. Mm, eggs. I don't think <laughs> your it's, eggs are weird. I don't oh, think I, it's weird. They're unfertilized. The only thing I think is weird is that you eat the shells too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, calcium, I guess, but uh, uh, no taste yeah, to them. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> so no time for second breakfast today, my guardians. I want you to be ready to prove yourself on the battlefield. A battle play. Now, of course, remember, this is completely non-lethal, and you will not, you will not be destroying our alliance with the Menders. The Menders oh. do their part and we retaining... Will. <laughs> you see, you seem, you seem sinister today, Mister Spice Beard. Would you like to go? Shh, shh. Okay, I'm taking that like, away. <laughs> taking it away. Take it away. <laughs> give no. it. Give it. You look Fine. all Hugo. Sheep, you get the. See. You will get the silver dagger back after the meat. <laughs> but what if one of them's a werewolf? No, no, no werewolf saw the roster today. Damn it! So I can't mm -mm. use blight. Do it. Will blight cause them deadly harm? To yes. Incapacitate do it. to. Do Does it. like six d eight or four d six? Maybe I don't know. You may use your spell practicing. I just request. Eight d eight. I just request that you, uh, if you are harming them with magical means, you do it non-lethally, entanglements or restrainments. Or incapacitations, mm -hmm. or rays of enfeeblement. Uh, all these things I know you can do. I'm allowed to use magic, though. Yes. Okay. Just it would be very, it would be very funny if the two schools of magic did not use magic casting in their meets. We could have like a dodgeball tournament or something. Ooh, I what could is do this, that. What does this dodge? Like, is, uh, hey, show them. Just show them. Okay. Just show them. Uh, dodge <laughs> a ball. Like, I, I know we need to get the hell out of it. It's 12, it's 12 no. plus 8, it's 20. <laughs> Wait, do you throw a dodge? I throw an egg. <laughs> dodge! Can you can you just dodge out of the way for effect? See, you're really bad at it. <laughs> what did you get? A 20. Not now. No, she gets it, though. Okay. Pivots. Look. See, you're really See, good at it. See, that's the concept. But, you know, with big balls. Big balls. Big rubber balls. Well, so you well, don't throw them at me. Are they and like get that get those precise skills going because they graced my face. And if I was to meet Jasper Holiday with egg on my face, he would never let me live it down. <laughs> he is the he is the leader of the Menders. Yeah. And so I need you to show the best pride of this training ever. Okay. It's Forever? been three years. It's been three years since I've been able to hold my head up high after one of these challenges. Jasper seems to always have the most talented knights, paladins, clerics, monks, casters, druids, so we're gonna rangers. we're going to fight for your pride. It's part yeah, of it. Yeah, Vegeta. <laughs> it is part of it. You're also fighting to show off your skills and aptitude as being the superior guardians that you are. All right, well... Let's go. Let us meet them. Follow me. I bet they're all douches. You head down to the courtyard once more. Similar totally. training grounds to you, where you have been uh, in the past. Uh, the Lady Zelda greets you at the entryway. Good luck, my initiates. I know you will do me proud this day. Just remember everything I taught you. We got this. We'll make you proud. Thank you. Yeah, what he said. We'll to totally make you proud. Why Why are you saying it like that? Thank you. Go be all weird. I'm, I'm going to eat an egg. Hey, oh, oh and, sorry. That's right. Intimidating. Throw some walnuts in his mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we we got to work Basil. on your intimidation game. 
Bishop, I'm sorry ahead of time. The fuck does that mean? And she blinks out. Oh shit. Oh shit. Simon I think and I got Sebastian. An idea. Simon and Sebastian uh perch now um on a, a grand oak tree overviewing the arena, the sixty by sixty foot arena, where you three enter in as the guardians representing. You know, you got your school colors on, you got your armor on, you're ready to go, <laughs> you got your equipment. Really non lethal damage or physical these. weapons, yeah. Wooden swords again, <laughs> training staffs, things like that. Mm-hmm. My, I can only find an extra small and dwarf. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Simon, it looks like you didn't have too many dwarf re- register this year. A little, little behind at the budget there. I like the tube top, though. Thanks. Oh, shut up, Sebastian. Just go shirtless. I hate it's, this. Well, I need my Rip leather, I need my leather so other armor, Rip otherwise it. I'll die. <laughs> You'll be fine. All right. And entering... And entering from the other side of the 60-foot arena comes the Mender's uh, initiates. Uh, you gather that they've been uh, collecting training and spell casting and different arcana or divinity spell casting perks from being students of the Mender's. Uh, they enter one at a time. The first to enter is a uh, halfling uh, wearing what seems to be the robes of a cleric. And holding, you know, of course, the cleric accoutre munch. Fuck that guy. <laughs> it's a she. She looks small enough Fuck to eat dang It's a she. Fuck it's a she guy. halfling. How tall is a halfling? Like, like two three, and a half feet yeah, tall. Like, like yeah, foot fuck max. that little lady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my very lovely lady, uh, Gretel Lunderfoot. She is going to be so grand in this performance. She is just just exceptionally well. Oh, let me tell you something. Shut up, Sebastian. No, she could even, I'm certain, give uh, Basil a run for his money in the cooking in the cooking arena. <laughs> That's another time. Shh. Next up. Shh. Next up. Oh, he's carried too. <laughs> right. Next to enter the arena, there is a about a, a five foot nine um, human man. He's human. got dreadlocks. Yeah, human man. man. Uh, he's got dreadlocks. He looks to be a bu- bit of a nature walker. Seems to be wearing civil robes. No obvious weapons. Uh, a few like darts on his side and stuff like that. Nothing like uh, a heavy mace or nothing like that. And uh, simple robes. Seems to come in barefoot. You perceive he might be a monk um, by his talismans and his. Um, Fuck that guy too. Robe. Yeah. You even woke, bro. That is that is my most esteemed student, Adrian Arrowhead. He is so devout, so precise in the nature domains. Fantastic. I love him. Oh, class A student. 4.0, for sure. I don't even know what you're talking about anymore, Sebastian. Shut the hell up. Who was, who's that last one coming in here now with uh, the leather armor? Oh, that's Volin. Volin Sterling Copperborn. <laughs> and with that... We what have, the fuck? Yeah, we oh have Basil shit! And Bishop looking at each other. Yeah. And oh they lock, shit! And they lock eyes. Volin and Bishop lock eyes for a second. We're gonna kill him. Is We're gonna your, kill him. Is that your ex? He can't even like speak. That mm-hmm. that is uh, his ex fiance. Okay. <laughs> and oh with, boy. With his entering, his, uh, he's a, a slender, um, well built. Uh, again, six foot tall Nara elf tell us person. That? He lays down his weapons first, and like he doesn't even pick them up. He walks across to the battlefield, tries, uh, goes to embrace Bishop. He's he just allows it to happen. He's punch him in the dick, punch mm. him in the dick. Her- <laughs> oh. Dagmar's feathers are all fluffed up and mm. furious. Punch him in the dick, my buddy bear. I've missed you so. Why? This is why awkward. Why awkward. did you leave? <laughs> There's an inferno. My dear, I went I went for my own safety. I'm glad to see you've made it out. But you said you didn't love me anymore. And I don't, but that doesn't mean I don't care. I'm glad you made it out. I'm glad you're still making your way across Iristel and it seems the planar systems. I, I just, I don't understand. Why now? Why here? Well... <laughs> See, I've joined the Menders. I'm trying to make Iristel whole again. Whole in the image that your family had originally. Trying to restore your grandeur. 
he had something to do with the fire. I just know it. Fuck this guy. He, I'm he sorry. breaks, he breaks oh, oh, away oh. from the embrace and he goes, you only cared for my family's wealth. You never cared for their ideals. That's what it, This change of heart of yours, I do not know you. You wound me even before the contest. I'll meet you on the battlefields, Mr. Plunderbloom. Fallen, go to hell. And with that, oh! with that he walks away, <laughs> picks up his, picks up his weapons again. Uh, again, they're all blunted instruments that you have, and they're gonna square off. He takes the furthest most square. On the 60 by 60 feet. It's a good thing I brought my own sharpened arrows. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. You, you play, 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 play. I was going to say, in all seriousness, you turn and you see, like, from this apathetic, just, like, chill dude who's, like, always had that, like, thousand-yard stare is just, like, a face made of stone and just eyes bright red and just... And Dagmar's just all worked up. She's not like I, nervous and fidgety. She's as all like, he's walking ah. back. I catch him by the arm. I don't look at him, just from below, and I go, "I know that face. Focus that anger. Use that rage. We'll win." And then I let you go. I look down and I just go out of the corner of my mouth. We're gonna do more than win. We're going to teach them a lesson. I'm so aroused. <laughs> let's go and with that roll initiative so I have it here uh, let's see a top of the order first will be uh, Basil Spicebeard what do you do um, so you're squaring off uh, there's uh, there's the monk looking guy and the cleric looking so lady so are they like um, 15, in front. are we both like 15 feet in we have a we yeah have a, 60 by 60 feet let's see there's probably are they like 15 feet from the wall so we're like 30 feet apart we're 15 feet from the wall yeah, I would say that's fair. Yeah, that's fair like, place. You're kind of like in the middle. You're kind yeah, of square. Yeah, we're not back to back yeah. on the wall. There's obvi- it's obviously a contest. You're not looking to like... <laughs> Everybody stay to the edge like an eighth grade dance. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're totally squaring up. Probably about, like you said, 15 uh, feet between you you and your opponents. Okay. There's a half lane and a uh, human and an elf in front of you in a triangle uh, formation. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to back <laughs> off uh, my full movement. 25 feet, mm-hmm. um, so that would be 40, 40 feet away. You don't mm-hmm. have that much space. Well, I thought it was a 60 by... 60 yeah, by 60, but, but, but your guys are kind of in the middle. We're 15 feet from the wall. Oh, yeah, I thought yeah. you said we were 15 feet from the our opponents. Yeah, if it's 60 feet, 15 feet in, 30 feet in the middle, so 15. Oh, so there's 30 feet between us, but yeah. we can only uh, be- uh, we're only 15 uh, feet from the wall. Okay, so, well, either way, I back up to the wall. Okay. Um and then Basil whispers a word in Sylvan and uh, casts Hunter's Mark on the cleric. Okay. And then he uh, fires off two shots. Okay. What does Hunter's Mark do? Uh, I will tell you. Hunter's Mark. Uh, you choose a creature you can see within range and mystically mark it as your quarry until the spell ends. You deal an extra 1d6 damage to the target target whenever you hit with a weapon attack. You have advantage on wisdom checks, uh, perception, survival, blah, 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 okay. uh, to track them. And then uh, if the target reaches zero before the time limit um, ends, I can use a bonus action to move my hunter's mark to another quarry. Gotcha. Um, Do they have to make a save for that? or Nope, it just happens. It just happens. Gotcha. Uh, and it lasts for an hour. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, two shots. Okay. Um, uh, on the half lane. Uh, yeah, the cleric. Gotcha. Um, nat twenty on the first one. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Um, Killer. <laughs> and thirteen plus eight on the second shot. They can't have a girl cleric. Thirteen um, plus eight. Though, both will hit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'll roll double damage on seven plus. Uh, where is it? Eight plus three. So that's. 11 on the first one. Okay. Second hit will do let's see 10. Uh, am I doing my math right? Yeah, 10, 10 damage on the second one. And then I am uh, I have a feat called Colossus Slayer, which lets me do 
an extra D8 of damage once per turn um, if the creature is below their maximum hit points. So I'll roll an extra D8, and that is 8 damage. Colossal Slayer? That, that, that even applies to a halfling? <laughs> yep, it says Colossal Slayer. Once per turn, when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, the creature takes an extra 1d8 damage if it's below its HP maximum. Okay. So it's just kind of like it is like a it's like a wear down tactic. I would assume gotcha. why they call it Colossus Slayer. All right, yeah. Uh, so you shot so, uh, you, you volleyed some arrows uh, to this halfling. Uh, you struck true. She's definitely not looking great. <laughs> she was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Took, took some, uh, again, these are blunt arrows. So she's like gained some bruising. Like, oh, what the hell? Oh, you're serious. All right, I'll take you on. And she will take you on. Oh, shit. Well, uh, yeah, that's my turn, so. Yeah, she will take you on. She is going to use... She's going to use Grasping Vines on on your party, because it's her turn next. And with that, the halfling's going to take you guys on, being volleyed with arrows. Like, you guys are really serious. Jeez. All right. Come forth, my plants. And she lifts her hands, um, and as she raises them, vines and and snaring plumage comes out and reaches at you all and needs you all to make a reflex saving throws, dexterity-based saving throws. Uh, that's the second nat 20 of tonight. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, you you definitely, like, you like do a little quick wall kick, and it's like, oh, that's cool. And you're not <laughs> yeah, hey, things. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, five total. Total. I am you are snared. ensnared with the vines. Um, 21. Okay. You are not ensnared. <laughs> Quick like a bird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With that, and she's, uh, she's going to move forward, um, heading towards Bishop. Uh, actually, yeah, you're within 15 feet, right? Yeah. I haven't moved yet. All right. She's, she's going to move uh, up to you. Like, <laughs> Guardians. <laughs> and I just stare like... Daggers. She's just she she's coming up she's coming off all this like fun all this fun as a halfling would she would just be like <laughs> oh oh you okay bud don't mock me so, sorry I just thought this was a funny... down a fucking column of fire sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry I thought this was just a fun little exercise in her magic so turn into a bear I, I, honestly I, oh I'll, I'll talk to you later and <laughs> she like actually shuffles back a little bit. <laughs> wow, I didn't even have to roll for that yeah, intimidation no, check. No, she doesn't, because she's just a happy hat little halfling. <laughs> she was. <laughs> All right, with that up next, uh, the uh, dreadlocked monk <laughs> uh, is going to advance forward. Dagmar, you have not taken to the air yet, right? No. Okay, he is uh, going to approach you. Fuck you. Yeah, he is going to um, attempt to hit you. Mm. With his uh, fists and chops and crossing. Because <laughs> Lord knows I'm not about to make this saving throw. What he's going to do is he's going to uh, lay on a fury of blows. A fury of. Fuck. Fury of. So we need to know if the 13 hits? No. Uh, does a 19 hit? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that one will hit too. That one will not hit for sure. All right. So, two hits uh, from this monk-looking uh, person. It'll be four damage. Four damage and four damage as he... Whoop, 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 ah, ah. <laughs> but then he's actually gonna... Um, uh, Brush get, your face and say yeah. sorry. Actually need you, I actually need you to roll a d4. D4? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you are. Three. Three. He takes three damage as he uh, retracts his hand back from the second blow, and your one of your talents actually scratches his hand. <laughs> gotcha. oh. Stop! Stop! You're just, you're, just, you're just swatting your arms all over the place like stop! <laughs> ah. oh. No. oh, what? <laughs> no! Somebody has natural weapons. I never thought of this before. I, I gotta get out of this profession. And you guys oh, no. wanted me to trim my nails. <laughs> They're looking okay. gross. Up next, we see a Volan, uh, the wood elf, uh, across the way. He's planting four arrows uh, near his far the back position. He's moved back, uh, similar to um, 
uh, to what uh, Basil has done. He's uh, taking a uh, strong position back there, and he's going to loose two arrows at Basil as well. Look, bring it. In similar fashion. Bring it, pretty boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> That's a uh, 13 and a 15 to hit. Um, 13 misses 15. Oh, wait, excuse me. Hang on. Oh. Uh, that's a uh, do, 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 do. that's a sixteen and a nineteen to hit. Okay, both hit. Okay. You can't just change the numbers. Uh, no, I'm looking at the wrong model. <laughs> no I was way. At, I was looking at <laughs> natural twenty. This is a diff I've used a different sheet this week. Cause I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the listener at home. I used a different prefab sheet. I'm sorry. I'm fucking sorry. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm so goddamn sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you are going to take, uh, from those arrows uh, flown off, uh, you're going to take 13 damage piercing. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's going, uh, well, piercing. <laughs> the Berlant arrows, again. This is like all, you're bruising. Yeah. You're bruised for 13 damage. Yeah, we, I mean, we get it. Mm -hmm. we, we get it. Yeah. And he will smirk. And again, give a quick wink to... I, uh, I Bishop. mock his smirk by smirking back like... Neh. And you know exactly what my face looks like. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, he'll, and he'll grimace a little bit and like give a bishop a little judgmental look like you're hanging out with this guy now. Ooh. <laughs> Tangled in vines, bishop just doesn't even acknowledge him. No. Just kind of like stares at like the ground in front of him. Oh, oh boy's okay. about to drop the hottest fourth level spell of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we have Dagmar up. Okay, Bye. so... Blight. <laughs> Blight. Um, so she's going to go after um, the guy right in front of her, the dreadlock, the, the monk. The monk. Boy, monk boy. Um, and she's going to use Word of Radiance. Um, so he needs to make a constitution saving throw of 15 or more. Okay. He does not save. Okay, so this spell's damage actually increases um, when I'm above a level 5, so we're going to do 2d6 damage. And we're going to go for six. Okay. Six damage uh, to him. She leans in close because this is a very close spell. Oh, yeah. And just looks him in the eye and utters filth. And then he, he all he hears is these uh, church bells ringing in his ears. And he takes, um, he's going to take radiant damage. Oh, shoot. Um, and then for my bonus action, I'm going to um, cast my spiritual weapon. Okay. <laughs> He hears those church bells in his ears, and he looks into your uh, vulture-like eyes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and hears those in his uh, in his immediate um, uh, sensory <laughs> organs. And it's like, oh, what? And then the then the scythe appears above you, uh, beside you, behind him. Where is it? The appear? scythe is going to appear um, a couple feet, like mm -hmm. five feet ahead of her left hand, mm -hmm. out to the left. Okay. So behind him, kind of, yeah, a little it's bit. A, it's appeared. He's looking. He's looking at the main energy. He's like, hmm. yeah, it's it's like wisps of purple gray smoke that slowly form a scythe. Very cool. He's gonna. He's he's gonna stare back. Renewed um, endurance. Like finally a challenge. Like as <laughs> if he was verbally non-communicating that. Like finally a challenge. And with that, uh, no movement action. You're not. Uh, uh, moving away? She's she's gonna take to the air. Okay, uh, I believe since he's right upon you, that would provoke an attack of opportunity. Ooh, and from then him. she's gonna stay right where okay, she's I locked. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, ah, here we do. <laughs> here we do. <laughs> okay. Uh, we next uh, have Mr. Plunderbloom up. He's right. entangled in vines. What do I roll for to break out of the vines? I need so. you to roll either strength check or acrobatics, or um, if you have some sort of magical. Um, um, a coupe de manche. Um, so I had plus two. Would an eighteen break me out? Yes. Sweet. Yeah. The Next. the vines keep uh, reaping at you as you uh, uh bust out, but you you can get out I, and you can move freely. I do one of those like body like snaps, and they like mm. snap, and they take like a big like step forward over to Dagmar. I reach into my component pouch and I pull out a caterpillar's cocoon. I crush it. And I grab her by the shoulders and I go, Dagmar, turn into a T-Rex. Turn into a T-Rex. Do I do it? And I cast <laughs> Polymorph. From one little tiny cocoon. Yes, that's what it takes. 
I don't know what a T-Rex is, but yeah. You turn into a... Well, I'm going to send it to you. So you now have these stats as you turn into oh, Jesus. a giant, like, 60-foot T-Rex. And Can I still Basil cast whispers, spells when I'm a T-Rex? <laughs> right. no, so once you, once you polymorph into another animal, you take on those traits. Um, so you can't cast spells. Where are you sending this but you do, I you believe as a T-Rex, you, rex, you do, like, crazy massive damage. I go to eat. The dreadlock. And when you get to no. when you hit, you eat, you eat. Actually, more. can't. I, I'm, I'm just gonna. Am step I wrong over him. in thinking? I think there's a move if you scoop him up in your jaws as a T-Rex, you can attempt to. Is that considered like a grapple or something? There, I don't know. There is bite, which is a weapon attack. It's just plus ten to hit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I just have to hit a ten on my dice to hit. <laughs> on target, hit is thirty three. Or 4d12 plus 7 piercing damage. Um, target is medium or smaller creature. It is grappled and an escape of DC 17 until grapple ends. Target is restrained and the Tyrannosaurus yeah. cannot bite another target. But you can uh, you can use multi-attack and also attack another opponent with your tail. Which, which is I a will plus do. 10 to hit. It is a hit of 20 or a 3 D8 plus 7. You didn't what? even let me cast Bless. <laughs> Wait, Bless, Bless! <laughs> and your arms shrink. In. Uh, no, no! <laughs> this is what I came from. This is what I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I feel so free! Can I talk or can Eats I just the roar? Man. That's up to Tim. I've heard kind of mixed things where it's like once you transform it into an animal, I think you, you can't speak. I think you can understand. I don't think you can speak. Can I roll? Can yeah. I roll for a really intimidating roar as I turn into a goddamn T Rex? Yeah, absolutely, you can. Well, let's see how this goes. Putting it in the fate of the dice. Seventeen plus whatever my screamy modifier is. Um, intimidation, charisma. yeah. Yeah, or I've heard. It, uh, I don't know if we want to use this rule, but I've heard that in in places of charisma in certain situations, like if you're trying to be physically threatening, you can replace charisma with strength and do like a feat sure, of strength, yeah, and like you're stomping your foot down. Yeah, go for it. Right, I mean, like obviously, plus seven. Like so. obviously, you can't do it if you're trying to do like twenty five intimidation. 24. But like a T Rex scream, I would imagine, <laughs> would be a. Of yeah. Display of strength. Yeah, so I got a big old roar. No, I do a big old T Rex scream at everybody, mostly in the face of this little piece of shit who came and karate right. chopped my face. Roar! Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. like, attack yeah. Volin. <laughs> yeah, the two compatriots closest to the T Rex are just like, whoa. Volin just, again, smirks and is like, huh, I remember when you learned. You learned that in, in Druid school. <laughs> Actually, I just learned it now because I just leveled up. Mm hmm. But shape that doesn't yeah. shape that shifting. This guy's story. This guy's a lying piece of shit. He doesn't know about this. I remember. I remember when your father created a mammoth that had four legs. This just has two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because obviously things claws. with four legs are more dangerous. What? Get out of here, you nerd! So Have you ever encountered a mammoth? A Have wolf? you ever encountered a T Rex? Yes. Oh, oh yes. Look at me, I'm Mr. Know It All. Like <laughs> I hate this guy. Yeah. And- so when you when you roar, uh, the focus goes back down, and you just see Bishop standing there, like Pokemon Master, pointing <laughs> finger. And he's just like, "Go, Dagmar, fuck their shit up." This is still and in her head, she's violent, just right? like, "Yeah." <laughs> I mean, you can nod. Hooray! You can nod. Yeah. Now I got a big T Rex body. <laughs> if I nod, maybe I'll fall like, down. Oh, <laughs> that's my center of gravity. <laughs> Yay! My olfactory glands are glands. My olfactory <laughs> senses are huge. Wait, I was a vulture before; they were already big. <laughs> I can you're, smell everybody shitting themselves. You, your wing arms retract into little arms. This is weird. You still have feathers, though. Yes, black feathers. Can I still have my little beard? <laughs> I would think so. Yeah, it would still be covered in feathers, for, and you're like it's more coat. like a mustache, mm-hmm. but like you know. Like the teardrops. Yeah. Yes. 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 And then, I can't. I think that takes up my whole action, mm-hmm. but I would like to turn into a bear. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that next turn. All right, cool. And with that, next turn goes to Basil. Okay. 
Um, well, considering all my spells are concentration, I'm just going to keep going after my mark. I have 136 hit points. Fight me. Yep. Um, yep. That is a 16 uh, plus 8. Okay, that will hit. All right. And then a 9 plus 8 is 16. 16. That does not hit. Okay. Uh, oops. Was it three? I was like, oh no, my armor class is low. Um, I have 136 so uh, hit points. Uh, 10, away. <laughs> and then for the Colossus Slayer, another three. So 13 against the cleric. Okay. She's not looking at me. This is like, why are you guys picking on me? Me, Gretel. Oh. Oh. oh I'm picking on the halfling. I see how it is. You guys have your big, big old dwarfs, big old tall elves, and your big old T Rexes. I'll tear that T-Rex apart. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. That's what I'll do. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, good fucking luck. I'm a T-Rex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna dispel that magic. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh my god. I need god. you guys to make contesting uh, spellcaster test. Me? Uh, yes. Because Do I have to do it? No. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm just standing there being a T Rex. It's like a plus seven. Seven, yeah. So seventeen. Seventeen. I'm gonna let the tie go go to uh, the the hero. Ooh, but which one? <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, no. This um, <laughs> this halfling uh, throws up her hands. Uh, Dagmar begins to start shrinking down uh, to perform again, and then all of a sudden, um, Bishop comes it back in like, oh, hell no, <laughs> cry that cocoon again. The second part of the abdomen, <laughs> and and revitalizes the. Wait, what was she trying to do? She was just trying dispel to dispel magic. the magic. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And I made it as a magic contest this time. Not today. Mm-hmm. Well, I yeah. think you'd have to because it's yeah. a fourth level spell, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly right. And um, unfortunately, she starts shrinking you down, but then all of a sudden, you know, Bishop's like, no. <laughs> and my insides <laughs> no. are just... You got one long wing arm and then it comes back into a little T-Rex I have air, arm. air cochra lungs <laughs> and a T-Rex sized body. <laughs> <laughs> we already don't do well because the oxygen content. Oh God. And with that, and with that, the halfling kind of look, peers up at you. That's like for tall elf. I'm like, well, son of a bitch. You're doing better than I thought. Punch her in the face. Yeah, I'd actually, I her. like her the most. Don't punch her in the face. <laughs> oh, damn. She's, she's just being happy. Let's let's kill that dumb boyfriend of yours. I mean, let's kill that dumb boyfriend of yours. <laughs> Got to say that in character. And with that, uh, let's see here. We're gonna have we have the monk uh, scale up the uh, the t- Tyrannosaurus Rex. Dagmar's never seen mm-hmm. this much action. Mm-hmm. Dagmar's gonna have to. Um, I'm gonna say. Um, Make a wiggle saving make, throw. <laughs> I was gonna say make a grapple or strength check. Um, strength because, check. Yeah, because the because the monk is now going to like leap off your your foot onto your haunches uh, off of your rib cage. He's gonna try to get to your eye. <laughs> so fuck you. Mm-hmm. Nineteen plus oh. what am I doing? Strength. Um, strength. Strength. Yeah. Plus what? seven. So twenty six. I have to be twenty six. Okay. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Try me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> an 18 so that does not uh match you you, you shake him just off wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Mm-hmm. but on his way down he's gonna try to hit your armor class he's just still gonna oh. try to kick you just <laughs> <laughs> uh no he probably doesn't do that uh, uh no he, he might uh let's see here that would be a a 12 no yeah he's like no <laughs> 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 Kicks awkwardly yeah. and just turns. <laughs> but he, Falls but in the summer- dirt with a big puff of <laughs> No, he somersaults by and he like, sticks to the landing. He's like, I meant to do that. I meant to do Sorry, that. Sorry, it happens to everybody. I <laughs> meant to do that. And he's like standing, like again posed to like, all right, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight anybody else. Again, looks at, <laughs> look, looks at the elf and like, well, okay. You want to go on? And I'm like, just Dad, walk away. It's me. I have to beat you. <laughs> You have already been beaten. No way. We can oh take my wow, Shindoro. <laughs> you are already dead. Bishop of the North Star. 
with that next action, uh, Volin now uh, pulls uh, from his uh, inner um, lined pocket, a hidden pocket. He unrolls a small piece of paper and uh, chants out in Elven a, a spell chant. And with it, uh, the circling dark clouds above come come full circle around the 60 by 60 feet arena. And with that, uh, I need all my heroes to make reflex-based saving throws, dexterity-based saving throws. Um, Nat 20. Oh, this T-Rex is doing me so well. Mm. <laughs> T- T-Rex, never... T-Rex just flips. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think that was physically possible. 40-foot T-Rex Dagmar is unstoppable. That's a 21 for me. Okay. And that's a 13 for me. I really should. Uh, okay, I was going to mm. cast mm-hmm. Shield of Faith on you. Yeah. And then I didn't because I was like, oh, by the rules. <laughs> but now I'm a T Rex. So. <laughs> it's all right. Do your T Rex thing. Yeah. Because yeah. Because at 40 feet, it's going to be real easy to bite one boy and yeah. hit the other. And yeah. Okay. All right. With that, a swarm of birds comes flying down out of this <gasps> dark clouds, pecking and ripping and, and plummaging on my heroes. Uh, everyone who made their saving throw of DC 15 or more uh, takes 11 damage. Unfortunately, oh no! Our 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 favorite wood elf bishop takes 22 damage uh, from these birds. You've seen him cast this before. It's one of his go-to's. It's a great way to get out of the fight, but it's also a great way to distract your opponents. There's birds just pecking at you, pecking at your heart, pecking at your <laughs> at your psyche. Yeah, I was gonna say like he, you know, it's like ah, it's ah, one of his go-to's. Ah, it's one of the ah. things you've seen him do before, and this is like it's you never... know I do, and like he gives you that grin, like you know I do it. And he just like through blood dripping mm. over his face, he just stares back at him. <laughs> Can you grab one of the little birds out of the air and just like? Ah! Squeezes the bird. <laughs> but then you feel bad and you let it go. Put in your pocket for later. <laughs> like a stress reliever and the eyes pop out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, we have next up, we got Dagmar. The T-Rex. Yeah. I'm roars going, out. I'm going after Volin. Are you going? Okay. For that a will, bite. I mean, you provoke attack opportunities from both um, other characters if you if you move okay. forward. Okay. Okay, <laughs> you don't care. I only have 125 hit points left, but like... Hey, you know. You know. need to know if a uh, 20 and 24 hit. <laughs> yeah, they do. Okay. Hit me with all you got, boys. Okay. <laughs> I'm a T-Rex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should say, when um, you get down to... If you get down... damage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they like, bah, 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 get back, get back, get back. <laughs> Only 111. If you get down to zero HP, if you get down to zero HP, you do not die. You just revert back to Dagmar. With my normal HP? With your normal HP, whatever you were at before getting polymorphed. So. <laughs> okay. Ooh, and I get another nat 20. Oh, shit. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Volan's going to die. Oh, my God. This blue so, dice is doing me so good. Double. Okay. Double wait. damage. Um, and for bite, hang on, it is 4d12 plus 7. It is 4d12 plus so 7. So 8d12. Do I double what I roll or do yeah. I? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So 8d12. Well, wait, so it's... should you do 4d12 and then double that or do 8d12? I thought it was 4d12 and then I doubled whatever yeah, my Yeah, whatever the face okay. value would be. Oh, okay. Times two. 12 plus 11. So we're at 23. 23. So... <laughs> 46, 46 damage with the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him. Bolin's dead. Uh, and now yes. he has, and he is, because he's medium size, he's human. Uh, he oh, wait, needs, hang on. Wait. He now it's needs plus, to, I forgot to add the plus seven. So 30, so it's 60. Oh, Holy shit. shit. <laughs> and dude, and if he is still dead. if he is still alive, he then has to he is now grappled in the mouth mm-hmm. and he has to Stop beat him, a DC He's 17. He's already mm-hmm. dead. <laughs> okay. And Whoa. then I swallow him down whole. <laughs> With okay, what will happen uh, is, And then I have is, another attack after that. <laughs> What's going to happen is Dagmar lumbers forward. She takes a couple of hits from uh, from the allies of Volan. Yeah, shakes them off. Like, walks forward. Rumbles the... Uh, pretty much fractures uh, the training grounds of the 60 by 60 foot um, arena. She's just knocking over bleachers at this point with her thunderous steps and cracking it down. Volan is 
uh, caught in the jaws of the T-Rex that Dagmar has become. Uh, the teeth begin to sink in as they begin to draw the like fluids from Volan. Uh, a blue himmering light uh, comes forward and pushes the T-Rex back and Volan back too. Contest is over. Captain slain. Volan, do you accept defeat? I accept defeat. I don't let him out of my jaws. No, you. No, you. you are, it's, magi- it's, magically, it's, he was it's ripped, ripped out of your jaws. jaws. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jasper uh, mm-hmm. and Cassandra are standing side by side with their uh, staffs raised, holding holding you both at bay, creating a uh, contest. <laughs> you know that you cannot break. I'm satisfied, Jasper. If you are, I am satisfied as well. You have done well in your tenure now in the place of your father's seat. I'm proud of you, Cassandra. Thanks, Jasper. You may take your students now. Oh, well, I give a fuck. I give a good game handshake to the halfling and the monk, but then I do the scroob to uh, to Volan, and I just fuck you. Yeah, Can Vol- I stay? Volan picks himself up. How long does the spell last? An hour. <laughs> it dissipates after just, Dagmar's having fun <laughs> stomping after, her. After Cassandra <laughs> lets you go, she yeah, just to, spells the magic. I'm trying to fit out of that exit door, and just my big booty <laughs> stuck in my legs. <laughs> <laughs> She you're, you're still the stamping around as Dagmar. You're like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Can I be still like stamping around as the T Rex? You dispel the magic, and I'm still like stamping. I'm just this tiny sure. bird again. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was amazing. The magic Whoa. on the fi- the magic on the field is dispelled. The healing magic, uh, the barrier magic, and any other things cast by either team has now been dispelled. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That was a that was a pretty dope fight. Mm-hmm. I gotta say. Volan looks that. defeated and humiliated because he was in the jaws of a bird lady. <laughs> He's like, Ugh. small, withering creature. Bishop has already left the arena. Mm-hmm. Like the He's, moment yeah. that the, the shield, he was like out, yeah. out like a mm-hmm. fucking bat out of hell. Mm-hmm. No, he, uh, Volan uh, sorts with his, uh, his uh, ve- fellow um, menders, as it were, and leaves the arena as well. Uh, can can I, I want, Dagmar yell oh. something at him sure. before he leaves? That's and she's like, Fallen! Just before he leaves. Mm-hmm. And she locks eyes with him and she goes, I know your truth! And then, and then he just like, looks <laughs> he back. Just, he just <laughs> flips his hair and leaves. <laughs> and Basil, not knowing the full extent of the situation, just kind of flips the bird. The grave will behind. come up to meet you, Fallen! <laughs> not before you look yeah. little chick. Eat it! <laughs> Why are we mad? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm here to support my team. And he leaves uh, He leaves to the Mender's locker room, as it were, and you guys are all in your locker room as well. And Cassandra meets you all. That was fantastic. That was the best display of the Guardian's teachings I have ever seen. You Dagmar's all implied all worked up. so much. Who? I know, I know. I'm excited too. Yeah, Bishop, way to pull out a, a nuke with that, uh, that whole T-Rex thing. Like, I didn't know shit. you had it in you. Thanks. <laughs> well, and he just <laughs> well, uh, Bishop. What are we gonna do? What do you mean? What are we going to do? He's here. We know where he's at. We found him. Can you guys clue me in on what what's going on? I'm a little lost. Uh, yes, you claim you, when you, when we're in private, we'll talk more. That's fine. If you guys need a moment, go go ahead. Um, Would you please? Yeah, it's good. Good job again. I, I must go again. Brag in front of Jasper for the first time in three plus years. Let's go down to the food hall. Con- we'll need some meat yeah. for this. Congratulations, one. Marlo. It sounds like we um, uh, need a, a minute. If you of don't course, mind. of course, take your time. So we we uh, go off into like a. Um, we steal some food off the the banquet table. Yeah. I, I get my pocket flask out. Yeah. And I, uh, I hand it off first to, to Bishop. And, I'm like, and he hey. hits it hard. Yeah. Uh, all right, man. Uh, I mean, I got plenty. She plenty pull, to go around. Uh, Dagmar from under her robes pulls out one of those mini, like, keg thing, like a mini, like, flagon, <laughs> and just sets it on the table. This will do a little better. So. I hand the flask you guys wanna, back to you. Uh, you guys want to clue me in? Um, Bishop, I think this is this is for you to tell. It's like... I, like, I know you mentioned, uh, we mentioned right before, you know, the whole battle, it was your... X, and I know that's tough, but it seems like from that whole I'll kill you demeanor, it seems like uh, it's a little bit more than just a bad breakup scenario. Volan was more than just a boyfriend. Volan was my fiance. We've never told you how me and Bishop met, have we? Um, no, I met you guys in that alley with those 
crazy cultists uh, kind of just uh, snowballed from there. Um, I mean, now's as good as time as any. You guys want to? Me and Bishop didn't meet under the best of circumstances. I'd say we were probably both in the lowest spot of either of our lives. But I had been traveling um, from afar when I came across Bishop. And Bishop, you should really take it from here where I met you. When Dagmar met me. I was at the edge of death, and she pulled me from my grave. Like like from literal my... grave? Oh, that's pretty badass. Sorry, right, go on. Like literal grave. Volan was more than just a boyfriend. He was my fiancé. He was the love of my life. And he did more than just leave me. He stood against everything my family stood for and left, leaving me broken. And he left just before everything was taken from me. Dagmar has already told you, I'm sure, about what happened. The great fire and wiped out not only my family's home, but the village in which my family's home resided in. Allowed me to be free in a way, to travel abroad and to expand my horizons. So in a way, I guess... I'm pretty thankful, but I've ever since thought that Volan was the root cause of my town's destruction. See, Volan was the love of my life, but I know that he was malice, and I know that he had ill intent. He really only loved me for my family's wealth. He didn't love me for me. Oh, that's all. But she likes me for me. Oh, I mean, this is close enough, but that's, um, less immense. That's heavy shit. You know, I've, that look on your face, I've, I've been there. You know, that anger, you know, you come to me if you want to talk about it. I spent decades angry, still angry. And, uh, you know, I, I know how to work through that. Well, still on, you know, working it out myself, but, uh, helps to have a friend. And listen, that Volan piece of shit, we'll take care of him. I just... I mean, not, not like kill I never, him. I never thought I'd see him again. But now, seeing him, the same, but different. Cocky, cocky piece of shit that he is. I know, I loved him for that. Really? Uh, but there is something different about him. Something I can't place my finger on. And now... Seeing him and hearing his voice, I want nothing more than for him to be dead. If you were given the chance that we could prove that he was behind that incident that you guys uh, told me about, the the fire, the, the great calamity, would you want to take it? Nothing more. I've been practicing. I'm still new to this whole stealth thing. It's usually been more of a, you know, run in and scream. But uh, I think maybe you and I could... Go in and uh, do a little reconnaissance. Maybe find out some dirt on this uh, on this Volan guy. See what he's up to. Maybe prove once and for all that he's tied to the calamity. Maybe get what he deserves. At first, I would never have believed that my Volan could be the root cause. But based on what Dagmar and I found, it traced back to him. I have no doubts. I just need concrete evidence. Do you guys want to pull a Mission Impossible? I would rather pull a Mission Impossible. But it, it's a sorry, it's a play I saw once. It, it like it's a it's a spy thing. We, you know, sneak around, get get evidence. Tom Thomas Cr- Cruz and was in it. He's a good good bard. Anyway, it fascinating. Yeah. Do you want to like do a sneak mission? It's my my main point. I want to find out what Volan is up to. Because whatever he's planning, it's not good. I'm it's my, not good. On my way to finding Bishop, I was actually studying multiple fires that had occurred on multiple wealthy families in the area. Interesting. And that's what led me to his town when it was in shambles. And that's where I found him. And in those fires across the realm, was there a singular thread? Was there anything tied to Volan in those 
previous flyers, or are we just kind of? Uh, no offense, I'm not. Every I'm with you guys, but grasping at straws here. There's only three things that unify these these fires: is old affluent families that are pillar stones of the community go up in flames, wildfires used, and I've found similar symbols on shattered pottery from what I believe was the start to the fires. Hmm. But that's all we have to go on. From what little I know, it does kind of sound like his M.O. Sneak in, get, um, you know, get ties with a famous family, and then fuck them. Not in a literal <laughs> sense, but... Well. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I mean, in, in Bishop's... And anyway, never mind. Uh, but we don't know if, if it's him behind all that or if there's something greater at work here, and why? Yeah, that does seem strange. Why would someone commit such mass murder? Pro- yeah, murder? Murder, the chaos right? chaos amongst the realm has been leaving all in my guild. I think what we need to edge. do to maybe lay this to rest... At least in a suspicion sense, once and uh, to, laid to rest once and for all is to find some evidence against Volan and bring charges against him. So I think perhaps we need to find a way to do that. I actually still carry the shards of pottery that I had found with me in my pack mm. up in my room. Hmm. Is there anybody in the Guardians that can do divination, perhaps find a trail? Uh, is this a match magic, residual magic on a, on a person? I don't even know if they know of these attacks or if they know of these fires. Do you think- We hadn't brought it up. We, this was just kind of- Do I, I pull everybody in closer just so make sure nobody's, you know, listening. No prying I, ears. Yeah, no prying ears. And I go, do you think that we have to- Take matters into our own hands, I perhaps. Think, I think we should keep this to ourselves. Yeah, I, I think perhaps this will be a nice little side mission to gather evidence against Volan from your, what seems like, pretty circumstantial but founded accusations against him. You see Bishop sitting motionless at the bar, holding the drink in his hand, and... Very subtly, you see a teardrop fall from his face. And he mumbles, We have to take him down. As the plunder bloom arson rests heavy on our adventurer's mind, who knows what our heroes will encounter next time as they adventure out into the Iristel Wilds. Join us, won't you, on our next encounters with our plus four friends.